Hello and welcome to the Deep Track Podcast, an exploration of watches, trends, and culture with a few adventures along the way. I'm your host, Blake Bettner. Today we welcome Eric Pavelka to the podcast. Eric is the proprietor of a new site called Curated Bid. He also happens to be one of my old colleagues uh, from oh, 15, 20 years ago out in uh, California when I was just at the cusp of getting into this world. Uh, he and I were uh, quite fond of sites like Bring a Trailer and uh, big time kind of adventure vehicle enthusiasts. Uh, so he has recently started Curated Big uh, with the express intent of connecting interested uh, buyers and enthusiasts of Adventure Ready 4x4s, uh, Overlanders, Vans uh, with sellers uh, across the country. So this episode really focused on really just chatting about that kind of stuff. Uh, what kind of life that uh, is for some of these enthusiasts, what some of these cars are, what they mean, what makes them so special, uh, and what kind of life they can open up, I think, for the people that use them and put them to use. Uh, some really cool stuff here, and there's some really amazing vehicles that they have listed on Curated Bid. Uh, if you're the type that gets a a little bit lost in uh, Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids, I think you would really enjoy this site. Uh, you might even learn a thing or two. I know I certainly have. Uh, we are not affiliated with Curated Bid. This is not sponsored by them or anything like that. Uh, this is really just us kind of nerding out over some pretty cool vehicles. Uh, so um, I hope you enjoy this episode. Next week, we will be recording live from the show floor of Watches and Wonders. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll also be uploading videos to our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to the Deep Track over on YouTube, YouTube, head over there, uh, get subscribed, and they'll be all set for next week. Uh, all right, with that out of the way, let's get into this week's episode with Eric Pavelka of Curated Bid. Eric Pavelka, welcome to the Deep Track Podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's good to see you. Blake, awesome to be here. Thank you so much. So we uh, we go way back. <laughs> Uh, you and me. Pretty <laughs> much uh, when I got out of university, I hopped in a car and drove to California and uh, got a couple small jobs. But my first big job was with this media agency, uh, Martini Media. And that's where you and I met. That is exactly right. What car did you drive out in? Um, a Subaru. <laughs> A, a Subaru. Subaru. There a we Subaru go. Out back. Yep. There it is. There <laughs> so, it is. What, what a great. And I took a. I took a couple of weeks, and I like stopped at a couple of, uh, um, you know, like uh, uh, for like national forests and parks and stuff like yeah. that, and did some some hiking. I had time on my hands, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so so I made uh, I made the most of it, uh, and then I think I drove up. Uh, I ended up like out in um, Southern California, and then drove up the coast uh, to awesome. get to San Francisco, which. Uh, uh, which is where we were at the time. So, um, Eric, you have a new project going. Um, I will let you introduce it uh, and, and tell us a little bit about who you are and your new uh, your new project and how you got into this. Perfect. Well, um, your road. I, I I I'm curious about your road trip, of course, that you did all those years ago to come out to San Francisco. But it also is a good uh, sort of genesis point for this project that we're that I'm working on. So. Uh, Curated Bid is a marketplace focused on buying and selling of uh, adventure vehicles. And so uh, while we don't currently have any Subarus on, on the site, uh, we're <laughs> focused a little bit more on, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, perhaps your, you know, 1986 Toyota FJ60s or cool old CJ5s, which I just, I just saw on the platform today. And I'm convincing myself that I should or should not buy it at this exact moment, uh, all the way up to Sprinter vans and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, as you and I connected on, uh, you know, at the beginning of our relationship, you know, I've been a car guy since, um, since birth, I grew up in Detroit and just, uh, it's in my blood, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, whether, you know, it's a hobby that, um, and passion that I've had for, for so long and, you know, like expensive hobbies, sometimes you try to kick them, uh, and I just can't kick this one. And so we, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's been something I've been thinking about for, for quite a long time. Now we almost started this company in 2017 and I can get into some of the history there. Um, but you know, we saw some other folks in this space do some really interesting things and think that fundamentally that the buyer of, um, these adventure vehicles are, you know, perhaps slightly different. They have a different set of um, you know, often uh, options or, or or upgrades or different things that they've done to it. And we thought, you know, focusing specifically in this market could be really interesting and potentially get, 
you know, some really fun, interesting vehicles. Um, and then at the same time, also get some fun, different folks that perhaps, you know, aren't the, you know, the cognoscenti of, of European sports cars and that kind of stuff that maybe other platforms of not that I'm, I'm a fan of European sports cars, but, you know, sure. but, um, but, uh, but, you know, but some of the folks perhaps that are coming across curated bid are, um, you know, they're focused on different things, perhaps, you know, yeah, and yeah. trying to get their cars muddy versus, you know, versus garage queen pretty things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There, there's, I, so way back when we would always talk about, you know, being on, uh, bring a trailer and, you know, I've, I've always suffered with this. I'm sure it's the same with you. Like if I open that up in the middle of the day, like it's guaranteed like 30, 40 minutes, hour totally. is, is going to be gone. Cause I'll end up yes. like kind of picking through things and find something cool and reading about it and, and sending me down the rabbit hole. And it's, it's been kind of like a similar thing uh, going through some of the stuff that you have on curated uh, bid, uh, which is really cool stuff. And, and we'll get into some of them a little bit deeper. Cause I think there's, there's some really cool things on there. Um, before we do though, yes. I know you're also kind of a watch guy. Uh, yeah. What, what are you wearing on your wrist today? So today I have, a not, I, I have my, I, you can't, the viewers can't, or listeners can't see what I'm wearing here, but I'll show you. Um, it is a, it, I, I didn't know this when I put this band on this watch, but it's my IWC knockoff, apparently. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah. of, uh, it's got a teal band um, with a uh, uh, black face uh, Bertucci, uh, which I got, I don't know how, some number of years ago now. And what I think the re and, and you and I have discussed this over over time, but like for me, I have a you know I have like a you know if I have like a nicer watch, that's usually staying in a box somewhere, you know, that I'll pull out when I need it, or if I actually need to dress up for whatever reason, or I want to you know have something a little bit more stylish. For me, there's but like the day to day, and it there's either there used to be you know there used to be an Apple Watch in the mix for a bit. Don't really do that much. There's a Garmin watch that I use if I need. I need to track heart rate and that kind of stuff while I'm not doing certain things. And then I need a watch that I'm super comfortable just doing anything in. And that, like my thing is that, you know, like whatever, 8.30 last night, I decided that I needed to go deep and, you know, do some housework outside with a hammer and saw and whatever. I, and, I, and I don't think about what watch I have on when I'm doing that stuff. I'm just find myself elbows deep that I didn't expect to be two minutes before. Yeah. So whether that's in a, you know, working with my hands in a middle of an engine compartment or doing something else, I need a watch that I can bang up a bit. So that's where this good old fashioned Bertucci has, has uh, come in strong. For Love it. Year. Bertucci. I see, I'm seeing more often in uh, uh, like menswear shops or adventure type uh, like gear shops and stuff like that. Yeah. I in a few, in a few different cities and they make some really cool watches, uh, including like a fully loomed case, you know, uh, composite case watches, but they're all, you know, Priced at such where if you bang them up or whatever, you're not going to lose any sleep. Yeah. But... <laughs> you're not going to lose over sleep it. over it. Exactly. If it gets ripped off on a mountain bike accident and, you know, and the face cracks, I'm like, all right, we're good. But imagine, but impressively, that's never happened to this thing. Like it's, it's, you know, it's not a Timex, but it keeps on ticking. So, you know, you, you right. bonded, you bonded with it, right? Yeah. I have bonded with this watch. <laughs> exactly. Are yeah. you guys, do you normally wear like a sport watch, like a, uh, uh, like a Garmin, you mentioned. Do you do you wear? I know you're, yeah, you're like you know, a big cyclist and stuff like that. Do, is that something that you wear every day? I've gone in and out of it over the years. So I, um, as I've cared about, I've always cared about my fitness level. But as I've cared about measuring my fitness level, is how often is sort of when that comes into play. And like my job now, like I was wearing an Apple Watch for a while, and I worked at Amazon prior to starting curated for five and a half years, and. You know, whether I like it or not, like it was helpful to have, you know, just notifications on your watch of at all yeah. times that like you're super plugged in and all the things. And I find with my lifestyle now that it's just really not necessary. You know, like I have I, I'm online all the time anyway, on PC or phone or whatever. But I don't need to have a have a watch sort of telling me all the stuff. And, and so that's like so then I moved away. from. Well, frankly, it kind of broke. Um I can't remember what I did to it, but again, <laughs> hence my, you know, like needing to be, have watches that are strong and sturdy. So it, it, you know, face broke and I swam with it or something, who knows what crazy thing. Um, and so that got sort of put in the drawer 
And then the Garmin stuff is like, again, if I'm trying to, I'm, for some reason I might start wearing it a bit more now because I'm trying to do some different training. So, you know, it might find its way back onto my wrist, yeah. but I don't know. I yeah. find those are, you know, an iPhone user, the the interface between a Garmin and the iPhone is substandard. And yeah. so, and so or at least my old, my old Garmin. And so, um, that I think is one of the biggest challenges for me of wearing one of those things is like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I should probably just go get another darn Apple watch if I want to do it. But anyway, yeah, the, the ecosystem makes it so simple to use. And uh, I, I think I, I like Garmin watches as well. I've, I've used them and I've, I've, I've run in them and stuff like that. But I always end up kind of like for, for a daily or for I'm training for something, having an Apple watch. Uh, and I have a I have two watches. I actually have an Apple watch ultra on my wrist. Uh, uh -huh. I, I dug this thing out. I um I dive in it and uh, I want to start, I'm, I'm contemplating right now training for a marathon in uh, uh -huh. in December, the Memphis Marathon, uh, the, well, it's actually the St. Jude's Children's Hospital Marathon that's in Memphis uh, with this other guy. And I've been kind of like an on and off runner for, for a while, but I've gotten kind of out of it the last couple of months as I've gotten a little bit older, I'm a little more injury prone or things hurt a little more than... <laughs> Huh? And they used to. So I'm, I'm realizing I, I needed to get on like more of a plan and a regimen. So yeah. if I'm going to do it, then I feel like the Apple Watch is good for, for right. that. Because, you know, when I was 35, I would just pop out and run you know, five, six miles, no big deal. And, and not yes. think about my pace or anything like that. Uh, right. so now I think I have to be a little more careful with how I, yeah. I move myself yeah. into it. Uh, yeah. But on the well, other wrist, I've got to do the Pelagos. So. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. I did it. I did a bike race a couple uh, months ago and um, and I got my, I, excuse me, I did fine, but I thought I could do better, you know? And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, okay, I need to step this up a little bit. Hence my interest in, um, in, you know, having something that could maybe help me focus on my training a bit, a bit better. So yeah, yeah you know, yeah. always continual improvement, right? Exactly. Continual, always continual improvement, get a little bit better. One yeah. way, so always, yeah. um, all right, let's, let's jump back over to some car stuff. I curated yeah. did. So uh, I like to tie at the top. It says your next adventure awaits uh, hand selected adventure ready overlanders four by fours in vans. What makes it, what makes one of these things like adventure ready? Like, are they all, is everything on yeah. here? Like kind of modified to some degree? If, like uh, to there's some, you know, there's some, uh, you know, grand wagon ears that maybe aren't modified, you know, like maybe it's just a low mile, cool grand wagon ear, but you, just, you find a lot of, you know, that's funny. I was talking the other day about uh, not to go super geek on some of the stuff, but like, you know, a Toyota. I'm sure there's some stock Toyota FJ60s on it, but it's funny. We look at it, we're like, oh, they look so much better with a two inch lift and some better tires, you know, like, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, so there's, there's, often, I would say probably 90% have some form of, mod some form of modification, even if it's just that two inch lift, you know, there's not a, not a, a ton necessarily that you have to do. But I think the key part of it, though, is like, and an adventure can mean a variety of things, right? Like we could, you know, we could go across Africa or drive down to Patagonia, but you could also just, I mean, what I did this last week, I was driving, I have a, I have a sprinter van amongst other things. And a few weeks back, I drove out to Colorado with my daughter. We did a road trip out. It was absolutely spectacular. We skied along the way. I couldn't get any better, but I need, I need to fly back with, uh, with her. And, and, um, and so I left the van there. So, anyway, so I went back out there for a couple of days and like I had a pretty solid four day mini adventure, you know, like I flew in on Wednesday of last week. It was dumping snow in the front range, like crazy, crazy dumping snow. I ended up sleeping in the van in a hotel parking lot in Golden uh, in a in a in an absolute blizzard because you couldn't literally couldn't get anywhere. 70 was closed a disaster. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, drove out from, you know, back, Eventually made my way to Winter Park, skated with some friends next, um, and then started my drive out. And I was like, okay, I know I need to get, you know, for a variety of reasons, I need to be back in, in Truckee in, in the, in, in the Sierras uh, on Saturday. And I was like, okay, where am I going to stay? That's, you know, for, for, for Friday night, like, where am I going to go? And there's a place uh, that I looked up and I knew nothing about it, right? The Silver Mountain Range, um, which is just to the west of the Bonneville Salt Flats. And so I pull in, you know, I sort of calculated what it would be. I pull into these mountain range, pitch black, 11 o'clock at night, no idea what I'm going to get in, myself into. And it's just a gorgeous place to camp. There's nobody around. 
you know, I just pull in, you know, walk, look at the stars, their next level, go to sleep, wake up at sunrise. And it's just, you know, the snow covered mountains around me and sun rising. I'm like, this is rad. Like, this is a cool trip. And I'm just, you know, and literally two minutes later, I wake up, do my things or 15 minutes, maybe wake up, do my thing, whatever. And I'm on 80, you know, and I'm buzzing, yeah. I'm buzzing down 80 for the next six hours at 80 miles an hour in the van, right? Get the truck. Yeah. But like that, being able to just do this mini adventure a little bit off the off the beaten path, you know, literally like 10 minutes away from 80. I felt like I was on another planet. And I think being able to take these these vehicles and do adventures. So whether you're going down to Patagonia or you know, you're just 15 minutes off of 80, you want a place to lay your head down for the night. Like there's a lot of adventuring to go do. And that's yeah. sort of what we're really, you know, and I think, I think that, you know, you might want, there's some might be, you might want to do that more than others in terms of vehicles on this, on the <laughs> site. Right. Like, I'm not sure I want to take my, you know, uh, mid eighties CJ five Jeep across 80 for eight hours. Like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. aggressive perhaps, you know, yeah. Yeah. Maybe my preferred vehicle, um, but that would be a rad vehicle to have in, you know, in Truckee and going on some fire roads to, you know, to a lake and go fishing. So, you know, so yeah. it, that's the kind of stuff that we, that we see that we like, and we're trying to really curate. It's in the, you know, it's in the brand, it's in the name, it's in our passion, like curate the really good stuff too, you know? So, and it's, you know, you, you could, you know, and like what defines good is always an interesting thing for us. Like, and that's always being refined, but like, you know, of course we want it to be interesting, you know, uh, um, in, in some capacity, whether because it's a beloved vehicle, like an old CJ5 or a CJ7, um, or, or because it's been well restored, or maybe because it hasn't been restored at all. Uh, you know, those are the kind of things that we're, you know, we're constantly thinking about. And at the same time, we're looking at, you know, we're not, um, we're, you know, we're sort of uh, year agnostic in some ways, you know, like we'll have a relatively modern, you know, 2016 um, Land Cruiser on the site that's had some modifications done. And like, if you, if you wanted to go to Patagonia, that'd be a rad vehicle to go do it in, right? Like, it's, yeah. you know, it's got some ARB suspension on it and some other things. So it's that to, you know, an old Willis wagon with the, you know, with the, with the, um, Chevy V8 swap in it, you know? So like it's, it's anyway, there's a wide, wide variety of things that really gets to, you know, these crazy vehicle enthusiasts, you know, tastes, which is sort of fun. Yeah. I love that. And there's something romantic attached to all these and browsing through, you can't help but think about like, Oh, that boy, that would be really fun to go and do something like this in, or that one would be go fun to do something like that. And, mm -hmm. and it's the same with like watches. A lot of these watches, at least the kinds that like I like, they, they, they almost inspire you to go and, put them to use and yeah, uh, you right. know, might even push you out of your side of your comfort zone a little bit or something like that. Yes. And that's okay. You know, and it's, you yeah. know, it's ultimately like, yeah, it's a silly thing and nobody needs this, but if that's like the catalyst that can like really inspire you to do those things and to put right. yourself in those positions and looking at some of these things that you have on here, like I get the same vibes as I do, you know, looking at an old sea dweller or something like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and and you feel like oh I could do that uh, and there's one totally. thing in particular in here these these Mercedes oh. uh, vans these yes. these Sprinter vans are like yes. they I mean it looks like you could live in these things and you know yeah, I find myself I mean, looking at it, the more you look at them they're like oh yeah oh, I could I could I could do that I could, I could live in that oh, I could uh, sell my well, place or whatever <laughs> just just live in this thing <laughs> it was funny I was having this conversation with my buddy so I I have a um, I have a text group of my buddies uh, called hashtag Van and I for die. And, um, and, uh, and so we, and so, you know, whatever reason, right. Like, and these are all very close friends of mine. And so, um, you know, a couple of them live in the Pacific Northwest, you know, a couple of us live here in, in the Bay area, uh, you know, and just from wherever around. And, um, and I was talking to one of them the other day and we were saying that like, you know, heaven forbid our wives say, Hey, you're done, you know, move the heck out. And, 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 uh, like, like we were saying, we're like, you know, like if you said you had to live in, like, go live in your van, the answer wouldn't be no. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be a hard no. You'd have, you'd really have to think about it. I mean, like, 
okay, like maybe, you know, and like you can see that like, all right, we're going to roll up to the Pacific Northwest and see some friends. And then we're going to go to the, you know, go to Colorado. And then we're going to go to, you know, the Southwest and hell, maybe we'll even cross the Mississippi, heaven forbid, right? And go out East. And like, you could literally see how you could pull together a full life by effectively living in your vans and seeing some friends and maybe working a little bit in between. And you could totally do it. It's really I fun. It. I think I the thing it. with those, I think thinking about like adventure and, and things. And, you know, I've, I was thinking about a van for a long time. I've had mine now for a, a couple of years and they range massively in terms of what you have in it, both in terms of like features and functionality and therefore cost and all the things that you might want to do with it. And I think that one of the really neat things where any of these vehicles do it, but I think the van is, is sort of the, is an interesting sweet spot of it where they're all, well, many of them are individualized and, um, and it's fascinating. Like my one buddy on this tech string, right? Like he has a Winnebago rebel, which is, which is like the standard, like you want to go start adventuring tomorrow, right? You can go buy a Winnebago rebel. It's four wheel drive. It's got hot water. It's got a bathroom. It's got a shower. If you ever want it, you can sleep two plus in it you know you can seat four like it's a it's a cool vehicle and it looks rad you know it's got a good look and feel to it yeah. uh and so you have like that which is like ready made and then you have other people like my my other buddy who's who is um he's a great cook and there's only two of them and he's got he bought he bought the 100 170 inch wheelbase so it's it's the big daddy and he's got the most ridiculous kitchen in it with like you know italian appliances and all the things and it's just i mean it's <laughs> And walnut, you know, walnut um, cabinetry. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely fantastic. And then you look at mine, and mine is like, my. I consider mine like a really large covered pickup that you can stand in. Like it is like, <laughs> sure. it is meant to put, you know, bikes and skis and, you know, my wife and my two kids and a friend and, you know, just concrete whatever you know you can just chuck it back there and, and just go yeah, and every once in a while we'll take a nap in it as well you know so like it's just anyway so we all have these different things as to what adventure means to you and like how are you going to use it and are you gonna you know like for me it's really important to not have it be you know like anything i'd have to worry about like just chuck skis in it chuck bikes in it do whatever you know yeah. like get it wet get it dirty it's like you know put a bunch of surfboards in it like i like i took a picture we were in San Diego for um in La Jolla for uh Thanksgiving. We were some friends. I think I literally had, I think I had like five or six surfboards plus some plus some um uh um uh, what are those other little tiny little surfboards, bodyboard things, whatever those are called. You yeah. know, and like like it was like floor to ceiling of just wet surf stuff. And I was like, <laughs> this is so rad. This is exactly why I have this thing. So, yeah. you know, like, it's just, how do you use it? What does adventure mean to you? So I think the Sprinter really, really helps you. Like, I don't know, it's really personalized for you, you know, and what does it mean? How are you going to use it? And, and, and it, it can evolve over time as well. So how do they, when, when you buy one of those, is it like, are, is any of that stuff like OEM from, from Mercedes or, or is it all just kind of like a, uh, like empty shell for you to kind of like do whatever no. you want. And it's just kind of no, like, well, it's a different power you, bank or something. You can go, um, Mercedes currently does not give you a, a you know, a, a full, a full one. Um, there's a lot of great outfitters that are out there um, that will, you know that will do a tremendously beautiful job of of uh, of building great vans. There's Revel, which is a little bit more, um, uh, I'm going to say, mass. You know, relatively speaking, right in this world. There's other companies that are like Storyteller, which are relatively high volume, but still like really high quality, really cool, nice, beautiful vans. Um, and then sometimes you get you know crazy people like me that bought during the pandemic and. You know, I bought a cargo van and, you know, and like it was a shell and I spent, you know, I spent the next however many months and you'd laugh at where I did it. Like, I mean, it is comically bad OSHA compliance, like just horrible. <laughs> you know, I had, you know, I, I, I had saw, I don't have a, you know, I have, a, I have a, I have a um, driveway that is, you know, maybe 10 foot long by 15 foot wide. I mean, it is like a tiny little patch of a driveway. So it was really like in the in this little one lane road that I live on. So it was really across <laughs> this little street. 
I'm cutting metal. I'm cutting wood in the driveway. I mean, it was just comical. It was just yeah. comical, you know, but so yeah, so then you get folks that are doing it themselves. So and everything. I love it. This yeah, sounds great. I remember fun. my first exposure to this. I don't know if it was my first, but the first time that it really stuck out to me, I was watching that documentary uh, that Jimmy Chin did on the uh -huh. climber uh, free solo. Alex yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. like had his van and he had like a whole yes. you know, a thing that he like lived in the back of it. And, yes. I, and I remember looking at it being like, oh, that looks pretty cool. Totally. <laughs> like, oh, totally. Well, it's funny though. I was sitting there with, I think that, I think I, I think I saw that movie with my wife before I had the van and she looks at me, she's like, this is what you want to, this is what you're going for. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. And she's like, are you out of your, like, and she's looking at me like, are you, are you out of your mind? It looks horrible. Right. Uh, but anyway, yeah. she sent warm to it. And, and as has, by the way, I think the other cool thing about these things is like, you know, like I joked about my buddy and I being single and, you know, whatever wives leaving us and we're rolling around the country. But yeah. I, the reality of it is that, you know, I have two daughters, 14 and 16 uh, now. And like, like of all the cars that we have that I've had, whatever, they're like, you cannot sell the van. Like that's a non-starter. Like all, all of them, the wife, the girls, like, nope, the van is the one we keep. You know, you can sell the old 911. Sure, let that thing go. Who cares? But the van yeah. stays. Like the van's got to stay. I the love that. It's, and, yeah. and I'm sure it gets tons of use, too. It's it's like a, it's the Bertucci watch of your collection, right? You can bang 100%. it around. And... <laughs> 100%. Like, I actually, so, you know, I bought it. I was like, I don't, like, it, I held off buying it for several years. So I was like, how much I'm going to use, I'm going to get out of this thing, you know? And, um and we've done some big road trips, but I've driven that thing like, and I work from home, like, right? Like my world is in Marin County. Like I more, you know, five days a week, I'm typically within three and a half miles of my house, if that, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. I don't, you know, and if I go four and a half miles, it's because I'm on my bike going somewhere or running or something, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm, I can live a pretty, pretty confined little world here most of the time. But that vehicle right now, I think has 26,000 miles on it. I've, and I've had it for less than two years. Like, it's not bad. Like it's getting yeah. a lot of use. And I have three other cars, by the way, you know? <laughs> so, you know. So I imagine that this world, I'm getting the sense, it's a lot like watches where there's there's like a big enthusiast scene around this stuff. For where sure. it, 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 it like can pull you in to like, oh, look at what that guy did with his. And then before you oh. know it, you, you're like, you know, you've got all this money oh, into it and it's customized to the hills. <laughs> oh, and not only that, it's like you have, whether you're into vans or whether you're into old Toyotas, you're into, you know, whatever you're into, like the communities that exist around, not just, you know, not just like the van or the Toyota world, but now you're into like FJ 60 world, you know, like I'm into the mid eighties, you know, uh, FJs and like, yeah, I'm not really into FJ forties or, you know, or I'm not really into FJ eighties. I'm only into this. Like, and then you go super, you know, super geek into all those areas. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's awesome. I mean, it's really, it's very cool, you know, like it's very neat. And then to see what people do to them again for the different kind of adventures that they're doing, you know, like yeah. we have a guy who has a FZJ, F, yeah, excuse me, FZJ80, which is like a Land Cruiser. I can't remember the exact year. I want to say it's 1996. Um, uh, it's down in Florida and he was doing some off-roading. So like he, you know, he needed different seats for what he was doing. Right. And like, you know, different kind of bumper and just different scene for what he was doing in the South, which would probably be a diff something different than someone else that would, you know, do the same car in, in, um, you know, in Colorado or the Pacific Northwest. Like, I think that's the neat thing is like, you just get these, you know, the super passionate communities around all of it. And I think for us at Curated, like my goal at some point is, and, and you know, major props to to bring a trailer for what they've done over the you know over the years, right? They're a publisher of ours when we worked together all those years ago. Um, I'm such a fan of of their ability to grow that from a lowly blog that was to do super geeks like you and I to you know this incredible business owned by Hearst today and the volume that they do. I, I mean, hats off to them. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing, and I think it's a little less so today. But maybe it's just me being a, a little. Uh, I don't know, but I think those early days of BAT, and I'm talking like 2008, 2009 to maybe 2018, you know, like mm -hmm. 10 years, I just felt like their community there was so good. And you almost felt like you knew everybody on yeah. that side. And like, so my goal with us, and we're not there yet, we're not even close to there yet, right? But I would love to be able to recreate that to some degree with what we're doing here. And yeah. I think that would, that would be, 
you know, you can look at success in a lot of different ways. How many, you know, how many vehicles do you have for sale? How many have you sold and so on and so forth. But I think that community would really be probably even more meaningful in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's one of the things that I love so much about BAT and why you can kind of spend a lot of time there without realizing it. Because if you find something that's interesting and you go and you start reading some of the comments below, you start learning things that yes you never really knew yes. about it. Like, oh, that right. has the same block that was in that race car or what, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, the and is. then it's, it, yeah. it, that sends you down the rabbit hole. And I, you know, and there's a lot of things on there and there's stuff on, on curated bid right now. Like there's this, uh, 84, uh, Pook, pooch, Mercedes. Uh, pook, the pook. Uh, the oh pook my god! From like Switzerland, and oh, you yeah. know, just seeing this thing, I was like, oh wow, it, you know, that could, that's something that I could like spend a bit of time learning. Like, what's the story with this thing? I love it. It looks amazing. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it wrong here, but roughly right is that you know, it's the exact same car, like the exact same car as the equivalent Mercedes um, G Class from the time, but. What I thought was really neat, and 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 it's built by, and I always get the name wrong, but it's it's Steyr Pook um, Daimler, uh, down, yeah, and um, and so what they determined at that point in time is that they wanted to brand that as a Pook to sell in, I think it was Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, and a you know variety of other markets because Pook was a better brand than Mercedes and off road stuff at the time. Uh -huh. And you're like, how is that? Like you're just like, wow, how is Pook better than Mercedes, right? Like mind-blowing a little bit but then like i mean the color of that thing the interior uh, is is just i love i mean i gotta say like and I, yes i could ship it over here i as mentioned I, I have a non-existent driveway about a one and a half car garage and you know and a, and a one lane street so i have four cars and like i do not need a fifth by any stretch but my gosh that pook has pulled up my heartstrings more than Probably in all, and I'm not just saying this because you brought it up, and I, I love that you brought it up. Um, uh, and we did not talk about this beforehand for you know for you know disclaimer here. It's one in all seriousness, it's one of my favorite things on the platform, and I, I just it's just it, it, it it just looks awesome. The green is fantastic. The interior is great. Like I've thought I I I've, you know as mentioned I have an old 911. I've literally thought about selling the old 911 and driving the Pook around town because it would get more use. <laughs> it would get more it would use get more exactly. Use. Yeah. It would get more the, the, it's it's such a good look and uh and it's you know quote unquote only you know 23 uh, yes a thousand five hundred bucks so you know it feels like accessible it's kind of like one of those things it feels yeah. like maybe less pretentious than like a g-wagon or something like that totally. if you're just looking for something to bomb to bomb around yeah, I, live in a, I live in a part of town where there's you know whatever my neighbor's got a you know new newish g63 right and like like the g63 i'm sure it's an amazing vehicle right i'm sure it's fast and all the stuff but like it, it's the wheels are too big the tires are too skinny like it's just you know like or the profile is too skinny like it's just it's just not my thing the pook like oh my god it just it's so much class here you know yeah. it's just so much in my humble opinion you know yeah no I, I love it i did you did you feel like you hit a point of where like you're interested in sports cars and the horsepower and all that kind of stuff where it transitioned to where you realized Oh, I can't like I'm not gonna put that to use. Like unless I'm gonna dedicate time and money to like going to yeah. track days and really learning how to extract yeah. the performance out of it. Yeah. You get to a point of like, well, I only need so much to be able to like have a good time with the kind of things that I would do. And you realize oh. that like you hit that pretty yeah. quick, right? Well, what I'm realizing here, first off, the van was a real like eye opener of like I was really concerned we wouldn't use the van at all. And like the van is like you know, awesome for that. Yeah. So the van was like a bit of a bit of like a huh, interesting. And what I'm realizing now with like, I'm really torn. You've hit it. You've hit it. We we can talk for another hour on this topic, by the way. So we'll you know you you cut me off at any point here, and we'll have a you know we'll have an offline chat about this you know internal struggle that I'm having with my with my you know car passion. But like, I I um. I really do want something that I can use a lot. You know, I think that is important to me. Like just having a car that looks pretty, that doesn't get driven a lot is not really my thing. Um, the uh, I'm convincing myself like, oh, I don't need sports cars anymore. I should just have the van and, and you know, it'd be great to have something like the Pook or something like that. That would be just really neat, interesting, and maybe even more fun to drive at the, you know, I probably max out at 32 miles an hour most days, you know, going yeah. around town. Yeah. Like it might be more fun to go 32 miles an hour than that. But then like a couple of Sundays ago, I took the Porsche out and I went in the back roads of Marin up here and it was fun. Like it was just fun. I was like, ah, oh, and do I, I might actually need a, you know, need to keep a sports car in the garage, but 
I go back, but I'm really torn because I'm like, how often am I getting to the back roads of Marin? Like, you yeah. know, I, I say I max out at 32. I'm not joking. Like, I max out at 32 miles an hour most days. Yeah. You know, that, that's like a feeling and a vibe that you get with that. And it's a what, an old G body or something? Uh, it's a 993. It's oh, it's a 993. 993. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's a, you know, semi modern. Uh, semi modern. You could drive it every day. You know, yeah. like it's like you could drive it every day. Um, Anyway, it, it's like I said, we could we could spend the next however long uh, you want to spend talking about this uh, deep emotional <laughs> challenge I have. So, but you know. they're both they're both inspiring. Of like, uh, they they're, are. They're, they're going to want to make you do those things to get the yeah. most out of it because that's yeah. how you're really going to like find the true yeah. like. Oh, this is the right. magic. This is where the magic is in this thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's doing these it's kinds of like, things. When I think about the pook, though, is a good, a great example because I've thought about that pook. Like I have thought of deep about that 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 darn car, <laughs> um, and uh, um, I've thought about it. And I was like, okay, where can I take it? What would that adventure be? Where would I go? You know? Yeah. And it's interesting because I have this van, right? Which is like it's four wheel drive. It can go anywhere. Like I'm, you know, I'm doing stupid four wheel stuff in it. When I was in the Silver Mountains and in, in uh, Utah, a couple, you know, this past yeah. week. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, am I really going to take the pook like up there instead of the van? You know, so then you're sort of in this mode of like, am I doubling up on my, you know, on, yeah. on my, on my adventure vehicles? But it would be so rad. It would be. Oh. Anyway, well, this is, this is, this is a nice part about watches. Well, I guess cars compared to watches because cars, you, you, you'll run out of space to put them. Yes. For most people where watches, <laughs> you generally don't run out of space. space. So you'll totally. have, you know, 10 dive watches and you're like, well, right. you know, you have a bunch of redundancies and yes. all that kind of stuff. Yes. <laughs> In between yeah. the two, I wish I was the motorcycle guy. I'm like, if I was a motorcycle uh, guy, yeah. I could be a little crazier than I already am. Like that would be good. But I just, you know, I just, I, uh, Anyway, there's a long story about my wife telling me a story about how she didn't want my daughter to uh, fall in love with a motorcycle guy. And I was like, yeah, you're probably uh, okay. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I I like, yeah my wife would not let me get, uh, ride a motorcycle around around New York, New York which is probably no. for, <laughs> for the interest of self-preservation, right? Uh, <laughs> totally. Good thing. Uh, so how does, so how does the platform work? Like, where do you find inventory? Like what's the kind yeah. people just like list on their own or do they have to contact you or how does that work? Yeah. So um, everything is curated. So we only accept certain stuff on it. Um, we do a combination of reaching out to folks. So we'll, you know, we're, <laughs> The nice thing about this job is I'm always scouring the web for interesting stuff for sale. So it was <laughs> yeah. just a continuation of my, what yeah. I did. Anyway. Um, and so we scour the web for, you know, interesting, interesting vehicles for sale. And I reach out to him, right? I mean, I have another business partner, Noah, um, also massive car guy, uh, worked for Singer, Singer Vehicle Design for a long time and other uh, other car manufacturers. And 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 so anyway, he's a he's a great partner to have. And so he and I go out and, and um you know, find interesting stuff that we just like, you know, that matches this, you know, curated vision of, of he and I. And um, uh, we do have a passion for L322 Range Rovers that seemingly no one else has. So I guess we'll, you know, we, we don't put those on the on the site too often. Although sure. so one, we have a Fast and Furious one. We got a Camel Trophy looking one, like they're cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, we go find interesting stuff and ask the sellers like, hey, this is what we're doing. Do you want to, you know, would you, would you be okay if we listed on, on the site? So that's one option. And then the other is that we're finding people coming in over the, um, as, um, themselves and finding us and, and submitting vehicles, uh, for sale. So, yeah, so it, it comes either, either way. Um, mm -hmm. and what's neat is that I would say probably those that have come in themselves, like instead of us reaching out, but those that have come said, Hey, I want to list, list your vehicle on our site. I'd probably say 98% of those have been. Yeah, that would be rad. Let's do it. So oh, which, nice. is very, yeah. which is really yeah. cool. Which is really, yeah, it's really nice fun. to to have a community that, that's that's just for this kind of a thing uh, instead yeah. of maybe getting lost in the weeds of of, of any of the other sites. Uh, right. And it seems like there's plenty of there's a lot of them out there now. Doug Demiro's got his thing. So yeah. Bids and cars and bids. Uh, I think then of course yep. bring you know bring it to. So it seems like there's more you know the audience that's interested in this kind of stuff is is already kind of acclimatized to making purchases on sites like this. Is uh is there is there like a, a fee structure or anything like that that's involved? Yeah. So we've done. So we've taken a. Um, so yes, the fee structure answer your question specifically. We've we've done the same approach that bring a trailer and cars and bids has, which we think a buyer's premium makes a lot of sense. So if someone buys a vehicle via us, there's a five percent buyer's premium that we that we charge. Um, 
We have gone a little different route to date um, in that from a business model of, you know, bring a trailer, cars and bids, others are auction based. And for a variety of reasons, we've decided not to go auctions. We might go auctions at some point, but right now we just feel that there's a big portion of the audience that is not necessarily interested in doing an auction for whatever reason, right? They're just yeah. like, yeah. No, it's just a little weird. Am I going to get the price I want? It's just it's got some level of uncertainty that I think that I think a seller has a hard time getting really some sellers have a hard time getting comfortable with. And so um, and I just think of myself, like I've bought very few things on auction over the years. Like usually I'm more of a, you know, buy it now or, you know, make an offer on something kind of yeah. kind of person. Yeah. And so and so just really leaned into that. So we have a so we have a sort of a make offer model, right? So someone is listing um, a vehicle, they have an asking price, and then uh, and then folks could bid, you know, make offers on these things and, you know, go back and forth and see if we can't come to a, a you know, a reasonable a reasonable price in, in, in between there. So yeah. um, that's the way that we're, you know, that we're doing. We might move to auctions over a course of time, but we think that this make offer model makes a lot of sense. And it's slightly, you know, slightly different than what others are doing, but I think it, I think it, you know, it, it, it it um doesn't have the time constraint that an auction does sometimes and like i think from a business perspective the time constraint of an auction can be great you know like you know you're going to get a car on and that car is gone in 7 days and you know and away you go and you're off to the next but there's a lot of buyers out there who you know whatever they got to check with their wife they got to get financing they got to you know they got to check yep. with their stole and their shaman and whatever else to decide whether or not like do i need you know a 1982 puke in my driveway you know like that <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah maybe you can decide that in two minutes maybe you shouldn't you know like maybe you need a couple of weeks to get your head around that you know that decision yeah. and so we yeah. you know we're giving folks the opportunity to to do that with this model so yeah it's slightly different um you know, time will tell. I think an auction model is fantastic if you have all the buyers and all the sellers and come up with the best market pr price. But sometimes I think you know folks aren't necessarily ready to go down that path. So anyway, so for now we've 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 tried this make offer model, which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, I like the kind of straightforward nature of that. Um, honestly, which which is which is kind of cool, and I could see this being kind of a sticky site to where you just want to come and kind of hang out and peruse around. Uh, it's a and it's a pretty niche. Like honestly, yeah. right? Uh, so, sure. uh, so maybe it takes some time, uh, you know, and, and some research and stuff like that. But I like the idea of having yeah. a platform like this that's just just for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, it's it's, I, you know, it's just one of those things. It just kind of sucks you in, and you 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 know you 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 find right. one, you go into it, you start looking at it, oh, and you see another one, and uh, yeah. you, you could I, seriously you could eat up a lot of time on this site, <laughs> uh, browsing around. Good uh sure, here sure. these some of these old awesome like land rovers uh and, and uh defenders uh, these are I don't oh know, yeah just, just absolutely awesome and yeah. like beautiful things uh, to, to, to behold so totally. it's really, really cool and they all have their own like personality to them as well which is which yes. is also what makes well it it's different. interesting like no and i have gone back and forth around like okay well how many defenders can we have you know like are we like are we like too long in defenders right we have too many but yeah. the interesting thing is that you look at the defenders that we have and they're all very different. Like I have like a, there's one that's in, it's in LA. It's a really neat vehicle, but it it is a um, really bright green. I can't remember. The, like it's a really bright green, you know? And so like it takes, it's a certain personality around. It's a two door pickup that they put like a cab on the back. It's really unique looking, really cool. Um, and then you'll just have like old school, like, you know, red, Defender 90, nothing fancy about it, but it's a, you know, it's like the workhorse that it's always been, right? And you can imagine going across Africa and that thing, you know? And then you got, yeah. you know, then you got 110s that are super souped up. I mean, I think we have one on the site that is, you know, a little less than $200,000. It's been, you know, it not only has it been gone through, I think it's been gone through twice, you know, like it's, yeah. it's the most perfect Defender you could ever want. And so anyway, so the variety that you could have, even within a single model is pretty neat. I think yeah. that's you know, there. And unlike, I would say the Porsche world, like if you took a nine, like, you know, if you took a 993, I mean, sure. You could go spend a million dollars and, and get a, get a um, Gunther works job done to it. Right. Or a singer, yep. right. You could do that, but let's back away from that. No matter what you do that 993, 
it's not going to be that different from someone else's 993. I'm just sorry, right? They might have a little bit more horsepower. The brakes might be a little better. The paint might be a little nicer, but it's not going to have a totally different personality, probably. Whereas like those defenders I just described, those are all 100% different personalities. Yeah. The same vehicle, yeah. which is sort of cool. Like that's yeah. sort of a neat thing about these things. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it, it it's you know it, it's great to discover these things and uh, and feel like they've they've got some stories uh, in yeah. it too, uh, you know, yes. and then feel like they're accessible enough that you can go and kind of make yeah. your own stories in them, which is the goal of all totally. this stuff, uh, right? I think one of the things that we haven't done that I wanted, like when I think of the list of like you know the startup, right? You got a long list of things that you'd like to do, and you're and, you know you're 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 checking them off one by one, but each time you check one off, there's two new things that are added. But one of the things I would love to do, um, and we're looking at a platform that might help us do this a little bit, is ask sellers for their stories. You know, like what was the coolest thing that you did in this vehicle, right? Like what was the one place you went that was, that was you know, particularly interesting? Or the one thing that you did that you're most proud of to the vehicle, right? Like I think those would be sort of fun questions to, to ask and to get people to be like, oh, yeah, that's neat. You know, like that's a different way of using it or changing it or whatever the thing is. So anyway, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I love that thing. though. They, 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 there's certain like vintage watches where the provenance that comes along with it and what the guy, you yeah, know, where this person got it, what they did with it. That that's a part of the story of that watch, and that's what makes it all the more kind of inspiring for you to want to like totally. do something cool in it, or like you have a responsibility to do some cool yeah. stuff in it, yeah, and not just like, like stick it in a box, you know. Totally, totally. Like I. I yeah, it's, you know, I was, I was, you know, being a being a car guy, and, this, and you know, like Seinfeld has, um, you know, the biggest Porsche fan on the planet, right? I'm not mistaken. I think he's got a Vic Elford watch. I think it's a tag, but like Vic Elford was, you know, race car driver back in the day, just exceptionally, you know, successful in old Porsches and whatever. And it's like, you know, Vic Elford's wearing this watch in the Targa Florio or whatever the heck it was, right? You're just like, yeah. oh my god, like that is next level. <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all. Know? I think he got that watch with the car, or because he, he had the he car, or something like that. Like it's, it's some possible. weird story around it, like yeah. that. Because I, I think I've heard him talk about it, and in him kind of just like, yeah, it just kind of was came with the territory, mm -hmm. or something like that. You know? Right. When you're a billionaire, it just all sort of comes. Because, yeah, 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 whatever, you know? it's, it's, it's like yeah. But it's a cool story, right? It's the story yeah. behind them all that makes the. That really makes it, you know, and what can you go do with it next? I think is what's. what's uh, I love it, and, uh, and and there's all kinds of good fodder on the site for that. When, um, where can people go find? Um, are you got are you on Instagram or, or Facebook or, or where we can are. people go find uh, more of you? Yeah, uh, definitely. So yeah, on the on the socials, uh, we're primarily Facebook and Instagram. We do a little less on X, to be honest, but happy to connect with you there if you'd like. But um, we're created bid on Instagram and. I think we're the same on Facebook, although I'm embarrassed, embarrassed to say if it's not curated dot bid, it's curated bid on, on Facebook. I guess I should memorize uh, that. I, now that. I know we're dot bid on Instagram, but anyway, we'll, yeah. you'll find us. And you're pretty hands on, right? Like if, if somebody's got something and they're wondering, oh gosh, uh, is, yeah. would this fit the, the vibe? They can just reach out to you and. Oh, Eric at curated bid, Eric with a K. So yeah. yes, I. I don't think I could be more hands-on than I currently am. When, <laughs> <laughs> Literally out in the mountains with these things driving around. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. I love it. Computer on, phone on, ready to talk to people anytime. I, you know, I mean, hell, you know, you can call me anytime. Text me. I don't care. We're, you know, let's do it. So, uh, I love it. Yeah. Well, con congratulations on getting this off the ground. It's really cool, and, and there's so many cool things on there. If if you like looking at that stuff, even if you're not in the market for it. You'll probably have fun just even browsing around this <laughs> this site. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, Eric, thanks so much for taking the, the time to come on the, the podcast. It's just been a, a pleasure to talk with you. Blake, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great to see you as well. All right. Uh, we will put links to everything that we talked about down below that you'll be able to find uh, everything. Uh, a reminder that uh, we are on YouTube. Get subscribed to the channel if you want to stay up to date with all the news. Watches and Wonders is coming up next month. We will be there on hand. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Until next time, take care.